So rather than how am I smashing out my hip flexors? How am I strengthening my core? How am I, what glute band exercises am I doing? <laughs> rather than all of those, if you just start to come back to this breath pattern, you will start to align and stack. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we are going to talk about anterior pelvic tilt. <laughs> mm, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> a lot of people come to me questioning, I have anterior pelvic tilt. What do I do about it? I have anterior pelvic tilt. I have back pain. You know, all of these different things. So we're going to really dive into what anterior pelvic tilt is, what to start to do about it, and our opinions <laughs> against uh, why people talk about it so much, how could it could potentially lead to other pains, and what to start to do about it. Diving right in, anterior pelvic tilt. We're talking about the pelvis here, which is that big old thing right at the bottom of your spine that your legs are also attached to. And it can kind of tilt both forward and backward, which we call anterior pelvic tilt when it's tilting forward, and posterior pelvic tilt when it's tilting backwards. Why don't you go a little deeper on what that means and how yeah. people can feel that. Yeah. So one of the ways that, I mean, even if you were just sitting, I think um, sitting on not necessarily a chair, but maybe you put a pillow and kind of stack so that your your legs are or your knees are below your hips. It makes it a little bit easier this way. So if we're even just sitting here, okay, so find yourself in like not slumping against a chair or anything. Um, and then explore what it feels like to get those. So without moving your shoulders and your upper back, see what it feels like to move these hip bones toward your thighs. So you'll feel usually like an arch into your low back. You'll feel, you know, the, the stomach elongate and your shoulders want to dip back, but try to keep them just straight. And then feel what it feels like to take those hip bones and tilt them back the other way without rounding through the upper back. So without slumping into your shoulders, trying to keep that chest high. And then can I just get those hip bones to come up toward my rib cage and my belly might pull in a little bit, my back rounds a little bit and then see what it feels like. Can I go back and forth? Can I find how much posterior pelvic tilt, how much anterior? So posterior meaning I'm rounding through the back and I'm pulling those hip bones up toward my rib cage. Anterior meaning I'm taking my hip bones forward into my thighs. When people talk about anterior pelvic tilt, if we look at the way that the body stacks, now if I pull my pelvis forward, so again, remember hip bones going toward my thighs and kind of that low back kind of arching and creating more of that extension in that low back, the pulling into the front of the hip. So now that's where people say, I have chronically tight hip flexors, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm stuck mm. in this anterior pelvic tilt and then my back works so much harder and it becomes what we call as physical therapists, you don't need to know this, but it's what we call a lower cross syndrome where the hip flexors are tight, the low back is tight because that's the natural pull of that anterior pelvic tilt so then we say, okay, well then opposite of that, the abs are elongated and weak and the hamstrings and the glutes, mm -hmm. really the glutes area is, yep. is, you know, extended and weak. Well, and when you think about all those muscles and when we kind of like dissect through that, it makes sense <laughs> when you think about it, just base level. Okay. The hip flexors and low back are going to pull us into anterior pelvic tilt the glutes and the abdominal region and the hamstrings are going to pull us into more posterior pelvic tilt. So strengthen and shorten those ones and lengthen the hip flexors and the low back. Great. Problem solved, right? That's what it would appear mm, not to be. Quite. <laughs> yeah. First of all, we'll say it depends. Like mm -hmm. most good physical therapists, they say it depends. Mm -hmm. And on top of just it depends, it's yes and. Okay, so Yes, maybe we need to work on some core. Maybe we need to work on some glute strengthening. Maybe we need to open up those hip flexors and get the low back to relax. Yes. And why is that the natural pattern that your body is wanting to go into? Because mm -hmm. 
I could do all day. I can hammer out the hip flexors. I can really smash into them. I can make you do all the glute exercises in the world. But if your nervous system, queen of your body, wants to naturally put you back into this anterior pelvic tilt, the moment that you go back to stand, the moment that you go back to lift, then we did nothing to actually work on the patterns of the body to create true change. We're not smashing out tissue. We're not actually creating that length and that elongation through smashing. So we don't necessarily go by that measure. Uh, maybe we need to create stimulation and that stimulation by touching into more of a psoas region, the hip flexor region, you know, if someone's digging deep into that hip, maybe we need to create that stimulation and that stimulation can then help to get fluids moving a little bit better fascia to for that moment feel like it can uh, like move and slide and glide better Mm -hmm. um, and create some signals to our brain to tell that tension in that muscle to relax that's all we're doing when we create touch so we don't necessarily need to smash and we don't need to get onto a really hard tool to create change your psoas your hip flexor is so deep into your hip Mm -hmm. that you have other things on top of it So if we're trying to get deep into that hip, we might be smashing into other areas that are a little bit more crucial and delicate that we should not be smashing into. Yeah, we got all sorts of nerves and vessels and arteries and stuff that are really important and different organs, (laughs) you know, in that area. So that's where anytime we're talking about using tools or doing deep tissue work, the most important thing is how is my nervous system wanting to react right now? Mm hmm. So when we're, so yes, you can do some things where you kind of stimulate into the psoas, get that to relax a little bit. Maybe you can do some glute strengthening, some core strengthening. Sure. Okay. But then how do I create that, that true change to that neurological system repatterning now Mm. when I'm standing, when I'm lifting, when I'm walking, when I'm doing other movements. Mm. Um, And that's where I like to guide people back into Ah, the breath. breath. <laughs> because here's the thing. You are standing and you're, near, you're an anterior pelvic tilt, right? So your hip bones are dropping forward into your thighs. And that kind of then creates this opposite pattern in my rib cage. So my rib cage is then going to lift and flare out. Okay, so it might not even open and flare, but it's definitely going to be forward and flare, right? So it, you're, you're going to be able to notice your lower rib cage pop out a little bit more if you're really in that anterior pelvic tilt. Okay, so now I'm here. Now take a deep breath. Where am I usually always going to breathe into if I'm already into this extended position is my chest, Okay. So now if I'm breathing up into my chest area, one, I'm staying in my sympathetic, I'm keeping everything really tight. So I'm keeping Mm -hmm. that tension through the muscles, through that psoas and that hip flexor Mm. and that low back particularly. So I'm going to continue to drive pressure in that sympathetic state by breathing into my chest all the time. Now, if I just start to switch the way that I'm thinking of that rib cage and I start to feel like I want to open up along my rib cage. So now I want you to take that, the end of that rib cage, the front of that rib cage, and I want you to point it down toward the floor. You might even notice, oh my God, I feel like I have to round in my upper spine. Try not to. (laughs) Okay. So try to keep. And that's one thing that I have some tendency to do. Mm -hmm. Try to keep your shoulders like as upright as possible while the rib cage is going down. This might be a little bit hard to figure out at first. So just go to Maybe it, it'll be a little bit less extended and up. It's okay if it's not completely down toward the ground, okay? Then I want you to put your hands on your low rib cage and give it a little squeeze. So literally grab the size of your low rib cage, try to relax your shoulders, and then give it a squeeze. Now breathe in nice and slow and feel your hands expand a little bit and then breathe out. Now what, and then just try practicing that a little bit. Now what naturally happens when I drop that rib cage is again, now my body is going to respond in a different way. So if now I don't have so much extension in that low back 
and that rib cage flaring up and I drop that rib cage, well, my pelvis is going to respond to that. So rather than being in that anteriorly tilted position, it's going to come back into a more neutral position. Mm. So already, if I just start to change the way that I'm breathing and I'm thinking about where my breath is coming from. Am I am I squeezing my rib cage? Am I am I expanding from that low rib cage? Am I using that diaphragm? Am I, am I creating a better pressure system from my diaphragm to my pelvic floor rather than my pelvic floor being open and tilted forward, right? And so if I create this better pressure system, I already start to stack and align that pelvis. So rather than how am I smashing out my hip flexors? How am I strengthening my core? How am I, what glute band exercises am I doing? <laughs> Rather than all of those, if you just start to come back to this breath pattern, you will start to align and stack. And then with that breath, if you learn to maintain that and keep that and move into some of those other exercises, yes. you will notice a world of difference in how those exercises feel and, and just systemically how you're moving. I can, from my own experience, and again, I was an athlete, I wasn't an elite, elite athlete, but I did play college football. So I had these patterns for a while. And anybody who works with athletes know that athletes always know best. (laughs) (laughs) And so of course in college, I I had some people say throughout like, hey, maybe you should try working on this or maybe you should work on this. And it's like, no, 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 I, I almost lift the most weight on our team. I, you know, I'm one of the strongest guys here, like, no, thank you, but I know what I'm doing. And it's almost taken me three, four years, five years of now having this awareness and working on it and putting work in to feel a real significant difference. And so again, these patterns that we create, how long have we been creating them? Mm-hmm. How long have we been positioned like this? Mm-hmm. Um, and just think back in your history, if this is something that you feel like you, you, know, you get to dive in more to, how long has this been my pattern? And what is my realistic expectation as to the plan to start shifting that resting state? This is our foundation, right? So Mm. we're not saying this is the end all be all of fixing anterior pelvic tilt. But I guarantee that if you start here, it's going to help you to build upon then what you want to strengthen upon and then what you want to build into. You will feel something different and you'll be able to make yourself feel different positions and oh okay that's what they're talking about and Mm -hmm. that's what it means to have that support there and oh wow i am in this tilt at this time and and it just starts to bring that awareness 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 i wear it on my wrist she wears it around her wrist and i wear empower around my neck (laughs) because we like to be able to empower people with these tools yeah to bring awareness into their body but yeah and it's a process and that's just the beginning yeah and then again it's learning how to start carrying a little bit of that new resting state through life and through movement and through higher level skills all right thanks so much for joining us learn a little bit more about anterior pelvic tilt and yeah. how you can start to shift that resting state in your body um, if you guys have anything that you want us to dive into more anything that's going on in your body any different body parts or symptoms comment subscribe yeah send us messages and then let us know if you try it out too like let us know how it feels in your body because this is how you start to understand it is by doing it so feel it in your body let us know below and then let us know what else you want to learn about 